Hey K-popers and welcome back to How You. Today we're talking about a boy group whose music and story are both full of chaotic fun, Block B. We'll start by looking at how the madness began on day one with their debut, then see how a lawsuit in 2013 led them to changing labels entirely. Next we'll see how the twists and turns just kept coming as they skyrocketed to fame as a boy group and look at how they became increasingly involved in their music over the years. And finally we'll take a step back to appreciate their absurd journey as a whole, the immense success of Zico, and how Block B's mark on K-pop will never be forgotten. Before we get started, I want to quickly thank Hallyu's honorary producers. If you want to show off your bias group here, share your picks in weekly videos, and join a vibrant Discord community with watch parties, custom emoji, and more, all you need to do is support Hallyu on Patreon. Now there's so many great things to get to when it comes to Block B and different aspects of their legacy, but it all starts back in 2011. That's when Cho PD announced he'd be creating a 7 member hip hop group, and he was open about spending 1.4 million US dollars on their creation. And it was just two months later on April 13th, 2011 that the seven members Taeyeol, Bebom, Jaehyo, Yukwon, Pakyung, Zico, and Pyo made their debut. Now if you already know about Block B and their releases, you know they have been unashamedly hardcore and badass throughout their entire time as a group. And that started on day one because their debut MV Freeze was banned by the Commission of Youth Protection because it was quote too sexy for Korean television. Now while that's kind of funny in hindsight, it definitely was a challenge for the brand new boy group because they couldn't sell their album to minors under 19 and the MV couldn't be aired before 10pm. Nevertheless, they pressed on immediately with a mini album just two months later called New Kids on the Block and its lead single Tell Them, which made it all the way to number three on the charts, an impressive feat as a two month old group. But as the boys became more confident and really steered into that hip hop image, the band Hammer came right back. That's because when they released their second EP with the song Nali Na, two songs from the album were once again banned by KBS because they were inappropriate for minors. And yet, Block B didn't suffer because people were really embracing their talent and style, and that EP doubled their sales to well over 50,000. And before 2012 was out, the boys returned once again with another excellent comeback in the form of their first album, Blockbuster, and the song Nilili Mambo. Much like I talked about in my deep dive for BAP, Block B found huge success in their rookie era thanks to songs like this that were just so complete. It wasn't just that the boys had developed this really unique, aggressive image, but it was that their music was authentic and that they used their MVs to tell these amazing high-flying adventures. Now interestingly, also like BAP, Block B had some serious problems brewing behind the scenes with their label, and 2013 was a tumultuous year for them, so much so that I feel like I should give a trigger warning out of an abundance of caution for what happens next. On January 3rd, the group filed a lawsuit against their agency to nullify their contracts with stardom, claiming a lack of payment for over a year and that the CEO had disappeared with upwards of 70 million Korean won from the members' parents. And in a wild turn of events just three weeks before the verdict was to be reached, that estranged CEO, Mr. Lee, committed suicide. Unfortunately for Block B, when the lawsuit did conclude, it ruled in the favor of stardom their agency. Block B were obviously unhappy with this ruling, and they stated publicly that they would be contesting the ruling and not working with stardom any longer. Thankfully that summer, the boys did negotiate a transfer to a different agency called Seven Seasons. Any worries that Block B weren't committed to their artistry and their fans completely vanished because just a month later they were already back with a pre-release single called Be The Light, whose MV can certainly be taken as a portrayal of events from the previous year that they endured. Now the big question was, did this public lawsuit affect Block B's fans and the group's success? The answer was a resounding no, because in October when they released their first album under their new label Seven Seasons, it debuted at number one on Gowan. The EP Very Good and its eponymous title track were so wild and again unashamedly different from other boy groups, and it really solidified their spot in the K-pop world. If you love chaos, mad adventures, and intense aggressive beats, then Block B are your boys. As 2014 came around, Block B were really entering a new era of fame, but in typical fashion there was a wild turn of events that shook up their plans. That's because in early April Block B were gearing up for their next comeback called Jackpot. The plan was to release the MV on April 15th, and the album two days later on the 17th. But on the day in between, on April 16th, 2014, Korea experienced its worst modern tragedy in the form of the sinking of the motor vessel Sewol. I've done an entire deep dive on this tragedy and how K-pop was a positive force in the wake of it, but needless to say it wouldn't have been appropriate to continue with their plans. So while Block B's album did physically release, they cancelled all promotions along with the rest of the K-pop industry to allow the country to mourn the tragedy. And being the great group of boys that they are, they didn't stop there, the entire group really went above and beyond. Zico dedicated his solo releases Tough Cookie and Well Done to the victims of the disaster and made both songs 4 minutes and 16 seconds long, referencing of course April 16th, the date of the sinking. He also personally attended the funeral of a Block B fan who lost her life aboard the Sewol ferry, and he dedicated a rap to her at a concert that she had tickets to attend. 
Now, I apologize if we got a little serious there, but this really is the roller coaster of Blockbee's journey as a group, and it's time for the story to take off once again. That's because Blockbee's next comeback was the song Her, an absolutely iconic song with iconic choreo to boot. While it was a big departure from the previous concepts, Her is just insanely infectious fun, and it was a smash hit. The album would become their highest selling album ever with over 86,000 copies sold and it flooded the Gowan digital singles chart. During the week of its release, Block B had Her at number 3 on the chart, Jackpot at number 5, Extraordinary Woman at number 16, Hold Me Now at 28, and Very Good at number 80. Not to mention the album itself was also at number 2 on its respective chart, so needless to say Block B were on top of the K-pop world. And then there was 2015, which was one of those years for a boy group where you look at everything they accomplished and just stare in awe. So let's run through that list of accomplishments real quick, shall we? On January 21st, they made their Japanese debut, cracking the top 5 on Oricon with Very Good. They held an almost completely sold out European tour in February and March. Taeyla released the solo track Shaking, and the Bastard of Sub Unit debuted with the absolutely bonkers song Zero for Conduct, which by the way, B Bomb and Yukon joined a web drama with FX's Luna and Secrets Hana to promote. They had a Japanese comeback with her, planned a four-stop tour across Japan, then expanded it to seven shows because of insane demand for tickets. They joined the lineup for 2015 KCON LA, where the LA Times praised them for quote, one of the most successful melds of Korean hip-hop with boy band dynamics to come to the scene. Pak Kyung also released a solo called Ordinary Love which debuted at number 3 on the charts. Then they returned to the US for a second time that year to tour once again with shows in San Francisco, LA, and Chicago. And if that wasn't enough, they collaborated with BTS on one of the all-time most memorable MAMA stages ever, complete with a dance-off and a rap battle between Zico and RM. I don't care who you bias in K-pop, that is an absolutely insane whirlwind of a year, and it's irrefutable proof that this boy group really was at the pinnacle of boy groups at the time. I think it's been a little too long since a hard right turn though, don't you? Well, don't worry, because in March of 2016, the group appeared on SNL and left with a sanction from the Korea Communications Standards Commission. What happened? Well, in one particular skit, a fan fiction was portrayed between Pak Kyung and Zico, where the two members fell in love and kissed each other on air. Since South Korea is a very conservative society, this earned a sanction for quote, promoting homosexuality to minors. And yet two days later, Block B were achieving a new high as they dropped the EP Blooming Period and its title track Toy. This is my personal favorite Block B song, and honestly, Blooming Period is a masterpiece of an album that stands the test of time. If you haven't given it a listen from front to back, definitely go check it out after watching this video. Like they did before, Block B took over with four songs from the album charting on Gowan and Toy earning the number two spot on the chart. And it was around this time that Seven Seasons announced they'd be changing their name to KQ Entertainment, which I'm sure is a much more recognizable label name in today's K-pop world. The boys would round out the year with more Japanese releases and the Bass Stars comeback Selfish and Beautiful Girl, which personally shocked me as a Canadian by featuring hockey jerseys from both the Toronto Maple Leafs and Montreal Canadiens. And the success just kept rolling in, rewarding Block B for their hard work and their increased involvement in their own music. The song Yesterday, which was composed by Pak Kyung, earned an all kill on the charts. And later that year, five different songs on their album Montage, including its title track Shall We Dance, were composed by various members of the group, alongside the repackage afterwards Don't Leave. Unfortunately, by 2018 it was starting to approach that time for Block B where its members had to start enlisting. While Zico was the only one who didn't renew his contract in the fall of that year, over the course of 2018, 2019, and 2020, the members all went through their military service, and Block B as an entire group has been pretty quiet ever since. But when you look at this group's accomplishments and stories over the past 10 years, it really has been as absurd and eclectic as their image, hasn't it? You really never knew what was coming down the pike with Block B. From their day one ban, to incredible rookie charting and sales numbers, to their unexpected cancellation from the Sable disaster, to more bands, to number one albums, and an insanely busy year in 2015. But it's not just about the accomplishments with Block B, it's about the mark they left on K-pop as a whole. These boys were absolutely fearless in delivering an edgy, hip-hop inspired image that didn't hold back and that forged a new path forward for boy groups to take. And as I mentioned in my 80s deep dive, when you look at their successors at KQ Entertainment, it's really obvious how Block B's authenticity, their attitude, and their success laid the foundation for a boy group that is just tearing up K-pop with epic comebacks right now. And I have barely even talked about Zico in this video, though he probably deserves a deep dive all on his own. Of course, Zico delivered as an incredible rapper and composer for Block B, but the success of the group has also helped him reach his full potential as one of the most respected talents in the industry. He has an absurdly long list of writing, composing, and arranging credits for Block B and beyond, he joined IU as the only soloist to earn a perfect all kill in 2020, and he runs his own label now called KOZ Entertainment. 
there really are just so many angles from which you can appreciate Block B, and no matter where you're looking from, there's sure to be a ton of twists, turns, and exciting accomplishments along the way. They did not hold back at all from delivering chaotic, hardcore fun at every turn in their music, and it just so happened that their real life journey as a group was just as much of a roller coaster that indelibly left its mark on the entire K pop world. And that is the story of Block B. I really can't believe how many times they went from lows to highs as a group so quickly, and I have a lot of respect for their commitment to their image throughout all of it. What do you think of their legacy? As always, thanks so much for watching this deep dive, and if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss all the great K pop content coming your way right here at Hallyu. This has been deep dive number 80, Block B.